Today, we're going to walk through building a code-first, multi-user .NET 6 bookings application with a flexible API from scratch, and then incorporate a feature-rich generated UI where non-developers can manage users, their access, and data all out of the box. Being able to deliver working systems early and often is an important part of building successful software products and services. Service Stack's built-in web UIs such as the admin UI and low code mean you can focus on back-end core capabilities first while still getting a functional UI for not only managing data, but also your users, their access, and much more functionality that can be added as plugins. Getting these interactive versions of your ideas in front of customers or colleagues enables us as developers to communicate our progress efficiently by giving non-developers something concrete that everyone can talk about. To demonstrate how this approach works when using the Service Stack framework, we're going to walk through the steps to follow to build a basic booking system that we can then manage and operate via the built-in web interfaces that ship with your application. To kickstart the process, we're going to use the servicestack.net website to create our starting project. By navigating to servicestack.net and clicking the Get Started button at the top right, you'll be greeted with a project template builder. We are going to use the basic web template and incorporate all the parts we need to build our application. First, we provide a name for your application and then select the following features from the menu. Authentication, an auth repository of Relational Database Management System or RDBMS, the auto query feature, and RDBMS support for SQLite. Then by clicking the web template, it will generate a solution zip file to download. Alternatively, if you prefer the command line, the servicestack.net X tool can be used to generate the same project, and the command for the same setup we've selected here can be found at the bottom of the start page. Once downloaded, extract the solution to a local working directory and open it with your favorite.NET IDE. Here we can see the standard four projects set up for servicestack project templates. But before we start modifying our application, let's list our initial requirements. We want to store booking information in a database, limit who can manage bookings, enable power users to manage data, users, and their access, and finally, enforce business logic rules on the API input. If we look in our Appos project, we will see several C -sharp files for configuration to help us kickstart meeting the above requirements. For example, to enable bookings information to be stored, we are using a SQLite database which is registered in the configure.db.cs file. Limiting who can manage bookings will require user authentication, which is initially set up in the configure.auth.cs file and the configure.authrepository.cs file. The configure.auth.cs file configures types of authentication methods our application will support while the configure.authrepository.cs file sets up how our authentication information is stored. And lastly, the configure.autoquery.cs file enables autoquery which will help us quickly support managing our data from a generated web UI. Now that our project is configured to support the functionality we need, let's implement our services for the booking system. For this, we will use a code-first approach utilizing ORM Lite and auto-query CRUD services. First, we will need a class to represent what we are storing about a booking in our database. This will include information like room type, number, start and end dates, etc. Once this class is declared, we will want to make sure the table is created in our database on startup. We are still using a SQLite in memory database while we're creating our schema, but we can change this to use a file or even another database technology like Postgres with just a small change in the future. Now, while our application can support storing bookings information, we don't yet have a way to interact with that data via a web interface. To help us do this, we're going to create services to enable us to create, read, update, and delete our bookings. By declaring classes for our request data transfer objects or DTOs, we can inherit the DTO classes from QueryDB, iCreateDB, iUpdateDB, and iDeleteDB, and ServiceStack will handle the service implementation for us. Each request DTO is related to the table it should operate on, but is still separate to our database model class booking. This means we can control what fields are presented to our power users by what properties we declare on each of these DTOs. 
Each property that matches on name and type will filter down to the related table class when creating or updating the values. By only adding the properties we want editable, users get exactly what they need to successfully populate a booking in our generated UIs. Running our application again and navigating to API Explorer, we will see our new booking services described in this interface. And since our booking services are created using auto query CRUD functionality, we will also see a link to the low code web UI at the top right in API Explorer when viewing one of these services. Clicking this button will navigate us to the low code interface where power users can manage data provided they have sufficient access. Currently, these services are not restricted in any way, so we are not meeting one of our requirements to limit who can manage our bookings. As a developer, we can use declarative attributes directly on our request ETOs to restrict which users can interact with our services. For example, we can add the validate is authenticated attribute to limit access to any authenticated user. Or further still, we can use the validate has role attribute with the value manager to limit access with users who have the manager role. These request level validations are completely extendable as well by either creating your own type validator or by using the validate request attribute with the service stack script syntax. Both these extension options have the ability to do additional operations during validations such as database queries to encapsulate complex validation rules. There are also property specific validation rules to help us create declarative, easy to maintain validation rules that apply to specific properties on your request DTO. For example, room number and cost must have values greater than zero. For both these properties, we can use the validate greater than attribute. To make it easier to test our role-based validation, we can add the admin user feature plugin so we can manage users and their access from the admin UI. To access the admin UI, we'll also need an admin user. Using the configure.auth repository, we can uncomment the line of code that creates our demo admin user. Now that we have both request level validation checking for authentication and roles and property level validation making sure our room number and costs are above zero, let's run our application and test our changes. By limiting access to our query booking endpoint, we can straight away see low code and the API Explorer are prompting us to log in. And because these UIs are running with the context of your application's metadata, we are prompted with specific login methods that our application supports. Logging in with the demo admin user, we can perform all the operations on our API because users with the admin role are considered super users. Trying to create a booking without a room number or cost now gives us the expected error message. And since the property validators are applied to particular properties in your request DTO, low code has enough information from your validation errors to know which field from your generated UI they're related to. Next, we can create a new user to test our role validation. Navigating to the admin user profile and clicking on dashboard, we will see the dashboard of the admin UI. Here we'll see stats of our API as well as the admin UI features that we can enable. Clicking on users, we can create a new employee user to test with. When creating a new user or modifying an existing user's access, the manage users interface will automatically show valid roles that are used by your validation rules like validate has role. Adding the employee role to this user and logging in with another browser session, we can query and edit existing bookings, but the plus button is missing. This is because the creation of new bookings is restricted to users with the manager role. Updating our user to have the manager role and removing the employee role, we can now create new bookings, but our edit button has been removed. These validation rules are enforced at the API level and we can get a clearer view of what's happening by using the API Explorer. For example, if we now try to create a booking in API Explorer without specifying a room number or cost, we can see the error message that low code is using in the response body at the bottom. We can also extend the low code user interface to make it even better for non-developers to interact with. 
For example, the notes field at the bottom here is just a single line field like everything else. However, it's more intended to hold larger volumes of text. We can use the input attribute on the request DTO and specify the type value of text area. This will change the presentation of the notes field in low code so it's easier to edit our notes about our booking. In addition to adding more metadata on our DTOs, we can also customize the HTML and JavaScript of our low-code UIs. This gives us complete customization of ServiceStack's built-in web UIs, including low-code and API Explorer, while letting you override only the specific requests you need, giving you the best of both worlds. And now that all our requirements are taken care of, we have a working system to get feedback and to iterate and improve as we go. Having built-in UIs like low-code and the admin UI give us a functional system straight away, which helps us prioritize where efforts in custom UIs and extensions will be most valuable. Other admin UI plugins like request logging and profiling are also available as well as plenty of ability to customize views directly in low-code. And while low-code and the user admin UI provide loads of functionality for non-developers as well, the built-in API Explorer is also perfect for developers who want to integrate with your system. Remembering that all the booking operations we created are exposed as services, which come with a step-by-step -step instruction for developers to integrate in nine different languages. ServiceStack provides everything you need to build web apps for any situation and scale. With loads of integration support to help developers save time and focus on what really adds value to your projects. Well that's it for this video, if you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.